Hello everyone, welcome to the homestead. It is freezing cold outside and we are going to start some seeds indoors. To start your seeds, you're going to need some kind of a seed starting tray. So I'm going to use uh, bird peas. I've tried a couple of different ones. I really like this one because it's reusable and I prefer the cells that have the pop out. So you can see this one right here, it's got the um, silicone bottoms to them. So whenever your seeds are ready to, whenever your plants are ready to come out of these little cells, you just push on the bottom and it pops them right out. So it doesn't damage the roots. I really like these. And of course they're reusable, so you can use them from one year to the next. Um, this one right here is one that I actually used last year and you can see it's still in really good shape. Also, you will need seed starting soil. I didn't realize this was gonna be a burpees commercial today. No, they're not paying me, although I will be happy to take their money if they're offering it, because I really like their products. So this is actually a, an organic seed starter block. I think you guys can probably see it right here. You mix this in with water and it will make two gallons worth. So this is a neat little thing. Now, when you use seed starter soil, any type of seed starter soil, it's going to be sterile. That means it doesn't have any added fertilizer, any nutrients to it. Its purpose is just to be nice and loose and fluffy so that those seeds do not have a hard time popping up out of the ground. Theoretically, your seed will have enough nutrients to sprout and get to about two inches, one to two inches. After that, you'll need to add some kind of fertilizer. I am probably not as terrific a gardener as I should be, and it seems like I almost always miss that little opportunity to start fertilizing them. And because of that, I've kind of stunted my seeds in the past. So what I'm gonna do actually is instead of using just plain water, to start this up, I'm going to use some fish fertilizer, and this is fish emulsion. There it is. It's the Arkansas fish emulsion. And uh, fish emulsion is really, it's fish poo. And believe me, it smells just as bad as it sounds. So be careful with it. Don't get it all over, all over your stuff. When you're using this for seeds or for small plants, you want to dilute this to half of its strength. So the required dilution rate is two tablespoons per gallon of water for regular garden plants. So I'm using one tablespoon of fertilizer to one gallon of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this open. It comes just in a, a little plastic wrapping and just drop the whole brick and I have a big five gallon bucket right there and there's my fertilizer that's already been diluted in water and I'm going to cover this with water and just let it soak so when you're using this you don't want it to be soggy but you do want it to be really nice and hydrated so I'm going to let that sit for just a few minutes. You always have the option of putting the soil dry in your uh, seed starting pots and then watering it afterwards, but it takes so much water to hydrate it that it'll take forever to, to get them really nice and moist if you do it that way. So I find that it helps if you get that soil hydrated first and then put it in your starting pots. I have some Abe Lincoln tomatoes, Hungarian heart tomatoes, Brandywine tomatoes, Amish paste tomatoes, black cherry tomatoes, and some white tomatoes. I've not tried these before. These actually came free from uh, Baker Creek. This one is an organic heirloom um, cayenne pepper um, variety. And then this one's Baker Creek. It's a uh, sweet pepper and an Echvarsky, so this is bullnose, and then Echvarsky. This is a not a pano. I've never grown these before, but I'm really curious to try them. They're jalapenos without the jalapeno heat, so it should be nice. 
And then I have a couple of eggplant, well, an eggplant variety. That's a uh, Metoyo, that's also from, from Baker Creek. And then I have a few hot peppers. I have, well, obviously you saw the cayenne pepper, but then I also have a uh, jalapeno and um, just a couple of little ornamental peppers that I'm gonna try to grow, so we'll see how those do. And just grab a handful and push it down into all of those cells. As far as seeding these, when you buy your seed packet, most of them will tell you the depth that they recommend for planting these seeds. As a rule of thumb, the depth of the seed is going to be twice the size of the actual seed diameter. So if you look at this tiny little seed and how big that is, if you go to twice that depth, that's as deep as you want it in the soil when you're, when you're starting it. And that's the same with all plants, um, just as a general rule of thumb. So these, the recommendation is one eighth of an inch. So to do that, I'm just going to make a little divot here in the top, and I'm going to plant two seeds per cell. And the reason that I do that is not every seed is perfect, as wonderful as they are, they're not going to be perfect. So I like to give it twice the chance to get started because it's a lot of work getting these seeds started. So I'm going to plant two per cell. That way, if one of them doesn't make it, then I have the other one. And maybe one is going to look better than the other. So it'll look like it has a better chance of doing well. And then when they both sprout, then I'll just choose one of those and I'll just clip the other one right off at the base and I'll just have the one plant in here. So when should you start your plant indoors? We live in zone 9A, 8B, kind of somewhere on the line. So the recommendation is to start about six to eight weeks before they go in the garden. So these plants in our zone will go in the garden beginning of April. So we're now at the beginning of February. So that's just good for you to know also. So again, just a couple of little divots, drop the seeds in there. And you saw me after I dropped them in, just cover them up with a little bit of that soil, press them down so that they make contact and then you're ready to move on to the next step. Now, you may be wondering why so many different varieties. I think the heart of every homesteader is to be more self-sufficient, and there are a lot of different types of tomatoes because they have different uses. So part of it, obviously, I'm trying to find out what grows best in our garden because I want to grow things that do well in our area, which I would recommend that you do also if you're starting a garden. Try different varieties and see what grows best in your, in your garden. But also, different tomatoes have different functions. So for example, your cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, the small ones, those are really wonderful for salads. And then your Roma tomatoes, or the longer ones, those are your paste tomatoes, those make really good tomato paste, tomato sauce. Not that the other ones don't, but the other ones have a lot more juice in them. They're a lot more watery. So it takes a lot of boiling down to get them to a thicker consistency. So those are gonna be your paste tomatoes. And then you have your slicers. Those are your big fat tomatoes that you know you slice up one slice and it'll cover an entire hamburger. So those are really good for sandwiches, um, of course hamburgers, like I said, and those are really good for salads as well. And they, they're all good for, for all purposes, but for example, this year, I'm really hoping that we grow a lot of tomatoes and I can can a lot of those, can can, 
for the winter and turn them into tomato paste. So if I'm going to do that, then I really want to focus on growing some good paste tomatoes. So that's my hope in doing that. The same thing with bell peppers. There are so many different varieties of bell peppers and some of them are better for cooking, some of them are better in um, your salad, fresh, some of them have a sweeter flavor, just, you know, then of course you have your hot peppers. So that's the primary reason why I'm growing so many different varieties. Once I finished planting, I went ahead and I labeled all of my plants so that I know what's in those rows. And then I also covered them up with some saran wrap, just a little bit of plastic film to keep the soil from drying out. I also have them on a heat mat. This is especially made for plant starts. It is a Fairy Morse brand and it will keep the temperature in the soil just warm enough to help start these seeds a little bit faster. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.